Welcome back to Hair of the Werewolf. I'm Chase, and I'm here with my co-host, Lily. Hello. We are a supernatural horror podcast where we tell each other stories that are allegedly true and often have a few drinks along the way to uh, <laughs> help deal with the fear. And spice things up. So cheers to all of you who are joining us. Uh, today, it's, I mean, this is the first episode of October, our favorite month. Yay. So, I mean, what's not to love about October? We have the best weather. It's not hot. It's not cold. The leaves are starting to change, all that good stuff. But it's also your birthday month. Yes. <laughs> I get a whole month, I've decided. <laughs> and we celebrate it all month. Um, and the fact that she loves horror means it's really easy because it's also Halloween month. Yeah. Which is the best holiday, or at least tied with St. Patty's for best holiday of the year. I guess that's your favorite. Which makes sense because it's on March, which is your birthday month. Well, it's yeah, but it's also chipper and full of drinking and not being ashamed of it. So it's all really good. <laughs> yes. Um... So we launched this podcast at the end of October of 2020, just last year. We're just a few weeks away from our one year anniversary. So this is pretty exciting to us. But before we jump into things, Mm -hmm. what we do want to mention is that we have a special episode planned for the end of the month. Yes. uh, And we actually need your help with it or your contributions to make it happen. So tell us what that is. So I want to, um, especially if we get enough stories, for sure, we can make an entire episode out of it where I tell listener stories, scary stories. So they're true encounters with the paranormal or UFO sightings or whatever it is that you guys have. Or maybe you went to go visit one of the locations that we already covered. That would be amazing. Um, So let us know and uh, submit your stories to hotwpodcast at gmail.com. We would really appreciate that. And also you can send it to us through social media, Instagram, any way you Oh yeah, you can like message us a story. If you on a phone, that's totally fine. Sure. But for those of you that don't know us, Lily and I have been doing horror movie marathons during October for many years. <laughs> we were at least doing them as far back as 2012, if I'm not mistaken. I, I remember think so. printing one of our calendars in 2012. Right. That might have been the first year, not sure. But each year, Lily comes up with a list of movies for each day of the month of October. Uh, we then put it on a fancy looking calendar and send it out to people so they can join along. And this year is the first year that it will be the Hair of the Werewolf calendar. <laughs> Not just our little calendar. So a couple days ago was the 1st of October, and we put the calendar out on Instagram. Uh, so if people want to, they could join us throughout the month. So if uh, you're interested, go to our Instagram account. You can find our calendar posted there. We're going to be talking way more about the movies at the end of the episode. So if you are interested in more about what we're doing with that and stuff, it will be there. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But we think it's more important that we actually get into the stories today. Yeah, exactly. So that way, if you guys want to stick around and listen to us kind of rant about what we think about the movies that we chose this time, then definitely uh, stay till the end. However, I think we're going to start with our story for today. It's only going to be one story. Because it is based on yesterday's movie. Oh, by the way, super sorry this came out late. <laughs> Only a day. <laughs> Only a day late. It's uh, It shouldn't happen again. This in, is... in our defense, we <laughs> just moved and we were, we were putting in offers on houses and it was just a really busy, busy time. Yeah, it was a very busy week. I don't know if any of you have ever moved before. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have. And you know how insane you can kind of go doing that. So anyway, okay. Today's story is the story of Annalise Michel. This is the story of a 16-year-old who would become one of the most convincing examples of demonic possessions and one of the most controversial cases in the eyes of the law. So the movie changed her name. Yes. So this is a true story of the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, which we did watch last night. So Annalise was born in 1952 in Klingenberg, Germany, with her parents and three sisters. She grew up in a devout Catholic household and with very strict parents, which I think kind of go hand in hand. A lot of the articles I read always made it seem like she was completely controlled or oppressed by her parents and religion, which, yes, they did play an important role in her life. But overall, uh, she did seem like a pretty normal girl. She had friends, everyone thought she was incredibly nice and did well in school, and by the time she was 16, I think she had a boyfriend named Peter, because he kind of sticks around, he kind of pops up in and out in stories. Okay. So, I mean, basically a normal kid, right? Uh, everything seemed normal until in 1968, when she had her first epileptic-like symptoms, 
Annalise at the time was 16 and described her her episode as feeling like there was something pressing against her chest and then blacking out. Mm, not fun. Mm-mm. Was it when she was sleeping or was it at all times or? And no, just for this one, like this is her first seizure oh, or her first moment? like episode. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Her family recalled that she appeared to have been in like a trance like state and her body becoming very rigid. That does sound a lot like epilepsy. It does. Actually, fair. Uh, time passed and the family began to think that the strange experiences was over. That is until 11 months later, on August 1969, Annalise had another episode. She exhibited the same symptoms as before, but this time she claimed that while she was having convulsions, she could feel something physically squeezing her bladder from inside causing her to wet the bed. She would then shake uncontrollably and lose consciousness. Her family decided to take her to a doctor at this point. Taken to the doctor, the doctor heard the symptoms, and then he was like, yeah, I'm going to refer you to a neurologist. Um, and the neurologist's name was Dr. Luthi. After some testing... <laughs> Luthi, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after some testing, Dr. Luthi diagnosed her with temporal lobe, uh, temporal lobe epilepsy. This disorder caused people to have seizures, memory loss, and hallucinations, both auditory and visual. Which, of course, this actually makes sense. The diagnosis seems pretty reasonable to me. Annalise began to take medication with the hope that it would cure her ailment. Unfortunately, Annalise's condition would only get worse from here on out. She continued to have seizures, but also she began exhibiting alarming symptoms. Uh, Whenever she would pray, she would begin to, to see demonic faces and hear voices in her head. The voices would tell her she was damned and that she would, quote, rot in hell, end end quote. And so she's she's on medication right now? Now she's on medication and the symptoms are getting worse. Okay, so the medication is either not working at all or it's not enough. Right, exactly. Assuming this is what's wrong with her. Exactly. So we're still not sure what's going on and neither does she. She's just like, you know, I... I don't know. The doctors told me I have epilepsy of some sort and um, having hallucinations, which makes sense. Hence why I'm on the medication. So, but I don't know. how are, are creepy voices and stuff like that while you're praying? Is that common epileptic <laughs> behavior? Because that sounds really weird. See, I don't know, because it's not like she was while she was praying. She suddenly had a seizure in which made her think that she was hearing these voices sure. or something like that. This is kind of a only while she was praying would she hear these voices sure, kind of, sure. you know. Uh, she would also hear knocking sounds coming from the walls in the bedroom, and so would her sisters. Oh, it's not just her. Uh-uh, it kind of extended. So this is when it gets really creepy. Are they really young, though? Impressionable, um, as authorities might assume? I think Annalise might be the oldest, but you know what? I don't think I actually confirmed this. I okay. don't think I looked it up. Because she's definitely younger in this than she was in the movie. Well, in She was in college movie, in the movie. Well, it's like her first year, so she's like 18, only like two years off. Not that big a deal. Annalise would develop an aversion to religion artifacts. Family members recalled a time when they all went to a pilgrimage to San Damiano, which is in northern Italy. As they approached the crucifix in the courtyard, Annalise was unable to get near it. She would circle around and attempt to approach it from different angles, but it always seemed like something was physically holding her back. Mm, That's not cool. No, this is a quote from Father Alt, who will come into the story a little later, but I thought it was a really good quote. He said, quote, Annalise told me, and Frau Hein confirmed this, that she was unable to enter the shrine. She approached it with great hesitation, then said that the soil burned like fire and she simply could not stand it. She then walked around the shrine in a wide arc and tried to approach it from the back. She looked at the people who were kneeling in the area surrounding the little garden, and it seemed to her that while praying, they were gnashing their teeth. She got as far as the edge of the little garden, and then she turned back, coming from the front again, and she had to avert her glance from the picture of Christ, which was in the chapel. She made it several times to the garden, but could not get past it. She also noted that she could no longer look at medals or pictures of saints. They sparkled so immensely that she could not stand it. Oh, that's End insane. Quote. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like experimental chase was like, what I'd want to do is want to hear that. I'd want to get like a medal of a saint, but like not tell her and like not hang it around my neck, like have it in my hand, just start talking to her and see if she notices just to see if, if she knew they were all saints and she's reacting to it or if, if a secret one would get to her. If you can like pass 
something. Yeah. Like Little in customs or something. Sna- <laughs> secret saint attack, if you will. <laughs> secret saint attack. <laughs> like, ha, ha, holy saint of beer. <laughs> Oh my god. You should have like the priest bless everything and then see what she notices isn't blessed or something. That might be a lot more like stealth, perhaps. <laughs> bless the toilet. Do it. God, yeah. That's all you need defecating her defecating in other places in the house too. I can't use the toilet, it's too bright. <laughs> um so in the same area, an elderly woman who was also in the Holy Spring suggested that she might be possessed based on her, her behavior, but also because she smelled awful. Ew. Yeah, that's really weird. What is happening? Another time, her mother noticed that Annalise was fixated on a small statue of the Virgin Mary. She would stare at it for long periods of time, and then to her, she said, quote, her eyes turned black, pitch black, her hands seemed to turn to thick paws and claws, end quote. So that was really weird. Like, it appeared to be, like, she was like seeing a vision of this or they actually were she could go up there and touch the claws and paws. <laughs> I think she said like literally they were thickening like thickening her hands or something. I I, I don't disgusting. know. It's disgusting. It's really weird. But we only have one witness here. Maybe she was just overreacting. Maybe she's I mean yeah, she's already like traumatized by yeah. what's happening. I'm pretty sure if I saw someone's hands turn to claws and paws, it might completely <laughs> change my entire view of the entirety of civilization. She's like, metamorphin time. (laughs) (laughs) You went straight to Power Rangers, but me, I was like, let's not play patty cake with this little creepy demon girl. It's actually anamorph anamorphs or something what are they called what were they those books called oh where the kids turn into animals that was anamorphs anamorphs and they always had those cheesy photoshop covers (laughs) yeah maybe she was a fan (laughs) she can only do her hands though this is worst superpower ever Uh, (laughs) so okay actually that quote i got from unsolved i remember this now uh, the, the BuzzFeed Unsolved yeah, show. Yeah. yeah, so I watched that. Because they covered that story. Pretty Did that cool. one have Shane in it? Or is it just Ryan and someone uh, else? No, this one was with Shane. Okay. Yeah. So, let's see. <laughs> she also told her family uh, that she'd often hear or smell burnt feces, which again, uh, people would also claim that sometimes they could smell it too. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know what that smells like, uh, but I can imagine it smells bad. <laughs> uh I think if you combined both scents, like <laughs> it smells like fire. And I poop. think we all know which one, which each one smells like. Just put them together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she also said, uh, "Quote on Elise, quote I see devil faces on the walls. I have seen crowns and seven horns." End quote. By November 1973, Annalise met with multiple doctors. She went to a psychiatrist, specifically a Freudian. Freudian. <laughs> <laughs> An embroidery scientist. An embroidery psychiatrist. A Freudian psychiatrist, wowza, who diagnosed her as possibly being epileptic and neurotic. She saw another neurologist who confirmed that she was having epileptic patterns. So there's no shortage of medical doctors who are actually looking at her. This isn't being kept strictly in a religious observation. Exactly. It really wasn't. Um, she confided in Dr. Luthi, the neurologist, that she was having more visions and they were becoming more intense. She was beginning again to see demonic faces on walls and now on other people's faces. Uh, this actually reminded me a lot of the Kuri, if you remember. It does sound a lot like the Kuri. Yeah, I'm like, maybe you caught a Kuri or something. I don't know. She told him that she truly believed that the devil was inside her. So this is kind of now her... Uh, spiraling into control or out of control into thinking that maybe this is not like a physical or like a a mental disorder but rather a real possession possession. she's starting to really think that it does help that she did grow up in a very religious household but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean it's not true i'm just saying i mean you she has the information she has the information (laughs) yeah that's a good i have the information (laughs) yeah like she didn't just like come up with this on her own um so Upon hearing this, Dr. Luthi would advise the family to consult a Jesuit. But when I read about his stance later, especially when this progresses, uh, it seems that he would deny it or not comment on it whether or not he said this before. Oh, okay. So covering, covering his ass. He's kind of covering it, I think, because this isn't really something a doctor should have done, probably. Uh, I, I don't know. Annalise did seek help from her local priest, but was initially denied. 
At the same time, they also believed that her situation required medical attention. So they they were like, keep, oh, they were keep pushing doing that. the medical stuff, right? So they're like, don't don't leave your doctor. That's very interesting. Exactly. But it should also be noted that this would have been the same time, or, or this would have been the same year that the movie The Exorcism came out. There were a lot, oh, yeah. Oh, th- yeah, that's right. This was a long time ago. 1973. This is now we're in 1973. So everything started in 1969. Wait, so wait, in 1969 she was 16, or when? Yes. So now she's older. I probably oh, should have mentioned okay. that. Yeah. There were a lot of requests and false claims, and so the church denied most of them. Because as the movie came out, Mm. a lot of people started to, like... (laughs) My foot hurts. I'm possessed. (laughs) Yeah, like, I have anxiety. I'm possessed. Yeah, exactly. When they should actually be going to a doctor, of course. However, I'm pretty sure if your head was spinning around in circles, then you might be possessed. (laughs) Don't see a doctor for that. uh, Yeah, those very rare occasions, for sure. Also, the Catholic Church rarely granted permission, so this would have been just one of the many requests that they received that year. So even so, they, there was no guarantee that she would have gotten it. Sure. Uh, real quick, I do want to talk about what constitutes a possession, like what are the signs, so that way we can kind of keep that in mind as we go along. From, I assume you mean from a Catholic perspective. What? Right, yeah. I mean, is, we, there other, is there another? <laughs> well, yeah, well, because remember, last week we talked about the oh, Mallory no, no, no. lifting rituals, and that's a completely different kind of possession, and they have different signs. I guess I meant like in this story. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> For sure. But insofar as a Christian Catholic perspective, these are the signs of a possession. I mean, we even talked about the Kuri. I mean, that's a different type of possession. So, yes. Totally, totally. I guess I meant Catholic. You're right. I should have specified. Um, So, one of them would be unable to see uh, sacred or religious artifacts. We've already seen that. Knowledge of things that would be impossible for them to know. For example, something that you might be thinking at the moment or something that might have happened to you when you were a child. Mm. Uncharacteristically strong. And also seizures or other epileptic type characteristics. So this is kind of weird because even though upon hearing this, the priest, you know, when she put the request in, there still wasn't enough evidence, I guess, at the time. Yeah, and that's and epileptic symptoms are broad and scary looking. So even within the community or rather the study of ep- epilepsy, it's still not really completely understood or really categorized. You can't just say like, oh, all of them have these things because When I was looking up different epileptic seizures for this and even for past stories, I was getting lost at, like, the differences of of between diagnosis. And I'm like, everyone behaves a little bit differently because we're talking about the brain. Exactly. I couldn't even comprehend. Complex, (laughs) yeah. I was like, what? Um, Yeah. So those are the characteristics or some of the some of the qualities that you might be looking for. Uh, Moving forward to 1975. So let's see. How old was she here? So 69. She was 16. Six years later, she would have been 22. Yes, 22. That Give or sense. take a couple months, spent, uh, you know, because it depends on her birthday is, et cetera, et cetera. I'll just say 22. Annalise, at 22, has now become fully enveloped by whatever it was that was causing her harm. You know, I, I just got to say one thing. Now that she's 22, it does make me realize usually when we see movies, at least, that mm-hmm. have possessions and whatnot, it's like this rapid decline that takes place over like a week or two tops, and it's like, and then the penultimate and ultimate situations occur. But this one, we're talking like six years. Can you imagine someone being possessed for six years? Exactly. That's gross. That's insane. And and the deterioration that she goes through, which I'll talk about here in a little bit, is pretty extreme as well. It's pretty, I don't want to say like impressive because it's not something that I don't think anyone would ever want to do. But I mean, like it's... it's Alarming? Well, it's crazy how she was able to sustain life anyway. And I'll... And I'll, and I'll Oh, totally. totally. <laughs> I'll go into that more it's just here. Six yeah. years. That's, that's heavy. <laughs> I can see why they did not make it, uh, did not cover six years in the movie. That would have been very hard to do. Oh, yeah. It definitely would have been a lot harder. And also, I think maybe get a different actress because from 16 to 20 is, is significant. It's a, it's a bit of a jump. Yeah. 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 So we're in 1975, and her current now state of symptoms, like where she is at this point, have gotten a lot worse. So here we are. Uh, while Annalise was under the control of the demons, as she would put it, she would rip the clothes off her body. She would compulsively squat, or uh, I think it's called genuflect. I don't know what that is. Okay, so I had to look it up too. I'm glad. <laughs> I saw it in articles like, what? Um, it's when the movement of maybe a curtsy or like a bend or a bow okay. of some sort. Yeah. 
I didn't know there was even a term other than bur- bow or curtsy. I agree All completely. Right. Or kneel. It could be a kneel, but it's kind of like a, a subservient, like a to oh, okay. you. Okay. And I think that's the difference of just like what I said, a squat. But a lot of people describe it that way, too. Anyway, she would do these compulsively hundreds and hundreds of times a day. Uh, she would also bark like a dog and crawl under tables for two days straight. So this was this happened once. Eat spiders and other insects. Oh, man. That was in the movie. I was hoping that was just fake for, for shock. That's gross. Nope. Um, uh. Yeah. In one instance, she managed to grab a bird and bite its head off. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. Didn't Ozzy Osbourne do that? It was a bat. Oh, it was a bat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Um, I think it was supposed to be a fake bat, but then it was a real bat, and he was did it, a bat? it anyway. I thought it was a, maybe no, it was it was a rat. Bat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ugh. That's really gross. Either but, way. Well, I mean, he did it for shock. She ate a bird because apparently shit's wrong with her. <laughs> something else, yeah. Which actually kind of says something about... No, never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she also purposely peed on the floor and then would bend down and lick it. Ew. Sorry. So it, I'm hearing stuff that reminds me of the Exodus, but this stuff happened like afterwards. So it's not like what influenced the Exodus; it just happened. That's no, this gross. is 1975, so this would have been now two years after the movie came out. Mm. But she was exhibiting a lot of these characteristics already beforehand, before the Exorcist came out. So some of it was after, some of it was before. Blah, blah, but blah. what we're establishing is that she was a really cool roommate. <laughs> yes, she would have been the best roommate ever. <laughs> Um, she also hardly slept. She would pray incessantly at night. She would also destroy religious artifacts around the house. And although her physical uh, state would slowly become more deteriorated, because she wasn't eating either, sure. uh, she would have an unbelievable strength that her family said she was close to superhuman. She even managed to throw her sister across a room and crush an apple with her bare hands, causing bits to explode all over the room. Oh, okay, that's actually kind of badass. Yeah. <laughs> Apples. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I wanted a pear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would give her a coconut and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> try that one. <laughs> Tough guy. Yeah. Uh, whenever she would try to stand, it was apparent that an unseen force would push her back down. Sometimes she would be able to get up, and even when others would try to help, it seemed like they were fighting against an unproportionable amount of strength. Most times, she would be shoved so hard that she wouldn't even have time to, to stop her own fall, and she'd end up landing on her head and face. Jeez. Yeah. She tried sometimes to combat that by laying down blankets and pillows all around her room, but unfortunately, right before she would be pushed down again, something would pull it from under her. So she would end up hitting her face again on the floor. That's messed up. Yeah, this is not a good story. <laughs> For any anyway, it's creepy. It's it's sad and creepy. Uh, there are images that you can see online, and you do see her face is really bruised up. She has black eyes and broken teeth, and it's because of this and other other things she does to herself as well. And this was also witnessed by a lot of people. This whole like shoving and her falling and things. Okay. So there are witnesses apparently. Uh, to combat these new symptoms, doctors put her on Tegretol, Tegretol, I think is how you say it, uh, which is a very strong drug for epileptics, but it didn't seem to help at all either. So Annalise's mother went out to find another priest who was willing to help them. She finally found Father Ernst Alt, who when he heard about it, he was like, definitely, I think she is possessed. So he went to go visit her. And uh, I thought this was really cool. I read somewhere where it said um, when he met Annalise, he asked her in his mind, quote, say who you are, end quote. So he did not say this out loud. Uh, Testing. Yeah, testing. And then Annalise looked at him and growled, no. Then leaped towards Father Alt and ripped off his rosary. Oh. Yeah, that's a strong demon. It's violent, too. It's violent, but also we just talked about how she shouldn't be able to touch religious artifacts. But she did. Let alone a priest. Yeah, but she did anyway. After this, uh, Father Alt immediately sent out a petition for an exorcism to the bishop, who eventually approved his request and extended his grant to the local priest, Father Arnold Renz, who would actually be performing the exorcism under the condition that it was kept secret. They were also required to use 
the exorcism rites according to the Roman ritual of 1614. Okay. I had to look this up. Like, <laughs> Please do. I, w- I was sitting there. I was like, I'm not too familiar with those. I'm not. I never went to Catholic school. I I mean, I was raised Catholic, but you know, the kind of Catholic. I'd even like to assume that if you went to Catholic school, the last thing they're going to teach people is the exorcism <laughs> rites. It's not like, all right, for your senior project, we're all going to be writing a paper on exorcism. Could you just imagine all these little kids raising their hands? I condemn thee to hell. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you can't tell kids about that because they're just like, I can't take the final, I'm possessed, and then they'd just be peeing all over the floor. Oh my god, I would totally take that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to pee on the floor for years. <laughs> I can get away I with meant it. to get out of test. <laughs> That's totally how I heard it though. Uh, <laughs> you can't wait to pee on the floor. Oh my. Okay, so let me tell you about the Roman ritual. It's basically the the exorcism process or guidebook that they've been using since 1614. Okay. So it's like the very traditional old school. It's been around for that long, which is incredibly uh, impressive. Also, a really quick fun fact. After Annalise's incident, in 1984, uh, German bishops requested a review of the Roman ritual of 1614. The Germans believed that the dangerous part of the ritual was that they were talking directly to the devil. The request was granted, and uh, by 1999, the Vatican changed the formula. However, not in the way the Germans wanted. In <laughs> fact, it included more language that spoke directly to the to the evil entities. Uh, so <laughs> it just reminded me of like, could you imagine when you think you got like the right answer on a test, so you tell the teacher, but then he ends up finding more wrong answers, and you're like, <laughs> God damn it. Well, also, it's so weird to hear because the exorcism still just sounds old and antiquated to me for some right. reason. Uh, so when you hear about like, oh, we've updated the exorcism process in 99, it's like exorcism 2.0. It's like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> 2.0. This isn't like computer software. Like, All what digital. is happening? Yeah. Um, it's you virtual. Just see, him, see him preach. A preacher reading an exorcism from an iPhone. He's <laughs> like flicking it up and down. Like, Actually, he's just like on Zoom. He's like, all right, put it on the screen. Uh, it cuts out in the middle of the exorcism. Sorry, bro. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So with that, uh, one of the suggestions that the church did include with the new method was that before an exorcism was granted, the victim was required to go through all modern medicine procedures first. So they had to That's go smart. neurologist, psycho- psychiatrist, all of it uh, before they even considered granting an exorcism. And also, it turns out there are different versions of exorcism within the Catholic Church, or rather even regional. So okay. I don't know what the Vatican thinks, like, but you know how people are going to do whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, there's even an American one, which apparently is very close to the original Roman ritual. So they kind of kept it OG, perhaps. <laughs> so, <I don't> know. <laughs> which is so weird. Like, I don't expect anything why would that's they do considered that? the American version to be OG. I'm just always going to be like, so they found some way to make it have more freedom in it. <laughs> Um, You're allowed to carry guns, yeah, and, oh, but it's mostly the same exorcism. Holy guns, Chase. Holy guns. Um, so let's see. Okay, so that was just like a really fun thing that I learned. In the following 10 months, Father Renz and Father Alt would end up performing 67 exorcisms. Mm, if at first you don't succeed, try, try 67 <laughs> times. 67. Uh, each session lasting up to four hours. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's about uh, one in one every five days. I wonder something that came into my mind when I read this is if the bishop that granted the exorcism initially was like, "Sure, you can do an exorcism," and then you're like, "I didn't say sixty-seven. <laughs> yeah, we've had one exorcism, yes, but what about second exorcism?" He's like, "You kept you told me to keep it a secret. I wasn't going to tell you." <laughs> I was going to get back to you when we were done. Yeah. (laughs) I want you to think we couldn't handle it. Yeah. I was like, I wanted to prove that I can do this. (laughs) (laughs) We shouldn't be laughing. This girl is suffering. And this is, but this is how we deal with it. This is nervous laughter. Especially Um, because we're not drinking today. Oh yeah. We're, (laughs) we're on agua. We're agua, but it's also really early. So I'm trying to, trying to not drink (laughs) in the morning. Um, Father Renz would also end up recording his sessions. In total, he ended up with 42 tapes. Uh, they're part of the transcription slash translation, because this was in German, that BuzzFeed translated. So let me tell you what that was. Perfect. Okay, so this is Father Renz says, Why are you at all here, Annalise? I have the right to bin in this woman. I will carry this brat so long until she grokes, this dumbass bitch. 
She then proceeds to do a low scream, which, by the way, the entire time her voice sounds like a kind of growl or guttural kind of Mm -hmm. sound. Annalise, for us, there is no coming back. Never. For all eternity. Father Renz, say your name. Annalise, I, Judas and Nero, Cain and Hitler. That's the five of us. So apparently Hitler was in there as well. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) All right. I actually, like, for a second when I read this, I was like, Hitler? Because, you know, he's he's saying, like, a lot of, like, biblical names or whatever. And then I'm like, is he, like, an honorary demon? Kind of like when every single time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings kind of thing. But, like, the opposite. Because, I mean, yeah, because they're (laughs) either implying that... This would either imply that Hitler was supposed to have been possessed himself, but did not have these symptoms, or he was just so evil he became... Or he, like, joined them. ...demon or something. Okay. Something like that, yeah. I don't know why, but for some reason that just comes off really ridiculous to me. I don't know why. It, yeah. So, or maybe, like, it's just the demons spitting out things that they might fear or something. Oh, yeah, you know totally, what I mean? totally. So, Father Renz, who's the sixth? Annalise, we lied about him. And then there's another woman in there who says, Lucifer... Father Renz, you lied about him? So I did read more about the recordings and actually listen to it, but I'll tell you about that in a bit. But I guess in one of the other recordings, they do confirm that one of the entities inside her is Lucifer. But again, you always have to keep in mind that demons constantly lie. Yeah, by so, confirm, you mean the demon said at yes. At some point said but, yes. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Right. I mean, for all we know, they could have been just like... Snapple, crackle, and pop in there. Yeah, <laughs> just add those elves for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, sometime in the exorcism. I think I said snapple, crackle, and pop. <laughs> not snap, crackle. Like, I took up, like the juice and then just snap. two elves and a juice. I didn't even think of that. I just like accepted what you said. It took a second. I was like, man, I don't think I've said those elves' names in like 20 years. And like, I, I, like, I still didn't because I said snapple, snapple, Arizona iced tea, Gatorade. <laughs> All in there. <laughs> Oh my it's gosh. It's got what demons crave. <laughs> Have a Snickers. Okay, we're done. <laughs> uh, where, where was I? Oh, yes. Annalise did end up mentioning another name during the recordings, which was Valentine Fleshman, who it turns out was a priest in the 1500s, but was removed for bad behavior, which I, I think means excommunicated. Mm-hmm. Uh, she goes on to provide an exact description of the former priest as well. And Father Alta would later comment, saying that there would have been no way she would have known this information. But I don't know. Um, that might be true. That might not be okay. true. I listened to other recordings, like I said, and which you can very easily find on YouTube. They are disturbing, especially when you realize how physically and mentally damaged she was at the time. When you hear her speak, she is very quick, sometimes answering questions before the priest finishes asking, which to me uh, was the scariest part. Other important phrases that were mentioned during the exorcism was that Annalise was chosen to atone for the sins of, quote, wayward priest and drug addicts, end quote. So this is a very interesting turn because it's now just not attacking her. She's actually suffering for the sins of others, which I found very strange. Yeah, that's a definite turn in terms of the purpose or giving the whole thing a purpose, I guess. Absolutely. That's weird. Yeah. So it gets a little weirder from here. And I think I actually do need to get a drink. (laughs) So how about um, how about we take a break and then we'll be right back. Sounds good. Yeah. See you in a second. All right, we're back. And this has been a pretty intense story. And as far as I can tell, it's actually going to keep getting worse. Yeah, probably. Probably a good time to take a sip of that cocktail if you got one. I know I don't, but I can't wait to get one. So <laughs> We'll get one later. All right, keep going. I left off that the fact that, you know, I brought in a new element here that she was now suffering for, for the sins of others. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly, yes, as she thinks. Uh, During the months that she was undergoing these exorcisms as well, she was showing more signs of deterioration. So she was actually getting worse and her behavior was getting more violent. I should also mention that at this point, she refused to seek more medical help as well. And she would no longer she would no longer be taking her medication, which arguably wasn't doing anything anyway. She's been taking it for years now. She's been taking it for years. And in the in the dosage got either higher or the type of medication got stronger as well. I got to say if you take if you take medication for years and it doesn't fix your problem, 
I'm the kind of person who also would probably stop taking. I would have just stopped too. I mean, I I can't imagine they feel good. So yeah, usually when you hear people stop taking medications, like after a week, it doesn't do anything. It's like, oh, you got to give it time. Oh but yeah, years, and it's like, no, I'm no better. Then it's like, well, it's a lot of money, and we don't know what else it's doing in my body. Yeah, exactly. You don't know. So she became physically abusive to herself and others around her, a lot more. Uh, she would also bang her head against the wall and bite herself and anyone else who dared to get close. The physical abuse became so bad that her family had to tie her up. Uh, whenever they would be performing an exorcism, at some point her eyes would turn black and you could hear or you could feel the hatred emanating from inside her. Her voice would also change from various timbers, also known as the five voices. So soprano, mezzo, alto, tenor, and bass. Tenor? Tenor. I don't know how to... I don't even know what these are. I just <laughs> looked them up real quick because I was like, what are... What are the timbers? Like what is the that? Like kind of operatic singers. You've got like tenors and everything like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> so without proper training, to my understanding, this would be basically impossible to achieve. She also refused to eat. She would say that she was, quote, not permitted to eat, end quote. Because of this, she ended up weighing only 80 pounds. Holy cow. Uh, yes. So for everyone else, that would be 36 kilograms. But despite her frail body and malnutrition, she still had crazy amounts of strength. Of course, it didn't last much longer because by June 1976, so this is she's 23 now, uh, Annalise was so thin that her cheeks had completely sunken in. She had broken bones and ripped tendons in her knees from constantly kneeling down to pray. I read that when this happened, she would laugh and continue to do them even though she could barely stand. Uh. Yeah, I can't imagine seeing something like that. Here's something crazy that I read in one of the articles. At some point, uh, closer to the end, Annalise's mother, father, and I guess boyfriend, Peter, were taking a short walk with Annalise. And, but due to her conditions, Annalise required assistance. But at some point, she suddenly began to walk on her own without Peter's help. Everyone could see that something had changed inside her. And Annalise seemed joyful and exclaimed that the Virgin Mary was walking beside her, which is how she managed to walk on her own. Later, Annalise would reveal that the Virgin Mary would tell her the following, quote, my heart suffers so much because so many souls go to hell. This is apparently what the Virgin Mary said. Uh, My heart suffers so much because so many souls go to hell. It is necessary to do penance for priests, for the young, and for your country. Would you like to do penance for these souls so that all these people wouldn't suffer in hell? End quote. She goes on to say, uh, I guess, quote, would you like to do penance for the souls that will be damned for eternity otherwise? End quote. According to Annalise, she was given three days. Well, she was given three to think about it. And she was giving granted also three days of peace. So she was actually behaving completely normal. For three days. Completely normal for someone who has, like, ripped tendons, uh, basically, weighs 80 pounds, and is pretty much in suffering. I mean... As normal as possible, yeah. But in an un- in a weird kind of way, though, she also managed to find supernatural strength, but in the opposite direction. Interesting. Yeah. You don't really hear exorcisms, and by you don't really, I mean, I've never heard this ever in history. <laughs> I've never heard this before in any other story, I should say, yet. Uh, basically, she uh, had to make a decision. Either she su- she would suffer for the sins of millions of people whose souls would otherwise go to hell, or say no. <laughs> Upon hearing this, the priest decided to use this information against the demons for their next session, uh, because Annalise ultimately decided to do it. Uh, unfortunately, her mother said that she did not want her to burden to take this burden, but Annalise I mean- really wanted to. I'm or just, not really wanted to, but decided to do it. We're talking about stuff that's like supernatural metaphysical, so I wouldn't even pretend to think I understand what's actually happening here. Mm-hmm. But the idea of telling someone you can suffer really hard and it's to help a million people. It's like, but how does it help a million people? I don't understand. So it's you're actually saving the soul. So it's kind of in a basically what Jesus did. It's kind of weird to, to compare the two, but this is what how the story unfolded for them or what they were saying. But but even because, even in that story, that's completely different because his whole purpose was supposed to be laid out ahead of time, as opposed to this just being like, your life sucks right now. It's really hard. Keep suffering to save people. Well, yeah. So she's supposed to like take such intense suffering as far as like what would be 
a sacrifice for the human race. Yeah. And then that way, like, when you committed sins, or we all do, apparently, especially according to Catholic Church, we've all definitely committed sins. And that would that would send us to hell, but now mm. we're kind of uplifted or saved from that. So that's what they said. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So like I said, Annalise obviously told this to the priest, wanted to use this against the demons. So on July 30th, 1976, her 76th exorcism, uh, this time Annalise barely had any ed- energy to fight back and would only repeat the words, quote, please absolution, end quote. Uh, if people don't really know what absolution might mean in this context, it's kind of like a formal release of guilt, obligation, or punishment. Yeah. So she was ready to like... Redemption. Yeah, get this over with. According to the tapes and eyewitness, when the priest would say that they will be coming, or they will be welcoming the mother, Mother Mary, that she'll be expelling them out of Annalise's body, the priest could hear the demon scream in fear. And according to Father Renz, uh, he could also hear them screaming out of her body, so all over the room. The next day, on July 1st, her family found Annalise's body, and she was dead. She was only 23 years old, and the official report of cause of death was starvation, from a medical standpoint, because she was refusing to eat or drink and all that Yeah, they were stuff. trying to get her to eat, but it wasn't happening. She refused, like she couldn't. On the day she also died, she ended up weighing 68 pounds. Oh, my God. Yeah. Amazing you can get that thin before dying. I I agree. <laughs> yeah. Soon after Annalise's death, her story became a media sensation, and everyone in Germany was talking about it. And, of course, it wouldn't be long until the whole world would become equally aware as well. So this is when things get more real. And I don't mean real, like, obviously, her dying is a very real thing, but I mean consequences from outside their tiny world <laughs> is, it, is this when her controversial exorcism diet breaks out into the world yeah this is not published in cosmo for doctors hate her <laughs> God damn. cosmo 10 ways to lose weight okay get possessed <laughs> obviously this i mean in a legal sense from an outsider's perspective this is straight up murder so both Annalise's parents and both Father Alt and Father Renz, who was an assistant to this exorcism stuff, yeah. were convicted with negligent homicide. In 1978, two years after Annalise's death, they would all go to court and make their case. You mean they were arrested, not convicted? Dun, dun, dun. Because you said convicted. I think they were finally convicted. So let me, I'm going to go kind of through the proceedings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So well, let's start with the defense. They believed that they had tons of evidence that supported that Annalise was possessed by something evil. They had the recordings and multiple eyewitnesses, but unsurprisingly, there was not a legitimate legitimate form of evidence at the time and basically just unheard of in general. So it was very hard for them to digest this yeah, the, kind of... The days of having religious court debates was hundreds of years ago, right? not, it, not the 70s. It wasn't as like easy to sneak in there it's not anymore. the Salem witch trials or anything. No, it wasn't like, witch? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Burn them! <laughs> um, so, luckily, the defense also argued that Annalise had the right to de- deny medical treatment, so I guess that was a thing at that time. She would have been old enough. As drastic as it might have been, yeah. Since she was refusing to eat, the treatment would have required heavy sedation, force feeding, and other physical painful treatments like electroshock therapy. Because of the severity of the treatments, it could be only be imposed on willing patients. You can't just... This would be something very hard to, to do to someone against their will. Absolutely. It's so extreme, also in its own way. As I mentioned, there were a lot of witnesses willing to come forward and be on behalf of the defense. And one of these people were a family friend, Thea Hine. Thea testified that Annalise would beg her on her knees to not let them take her to the hospital or receive any medical treatment of any kind. So that was kind of on, as far as like testament that, yes, maybe they might have thought that she would have needed or required medical attention at some point, but Annalise refused. So there's nothing they could have done uh, yeah, either at some way. Point, I mean, at least when she's an adult, when someone is 18 and they don't want to go to the hospital, you can't force them to do it. I, this is the way I feel about it. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things like, what do you do? A damning piece of evidence, though, is is when, um, I can't remember if it was either Father Renz or Father Alt, uh, sought out after some medical advice from a friend, Dr. Richard Roth, about a month before Annalise's death. 
However, Dr. Roth claimed that he was only there to visit Annalise, not as a doctor, but he was there for scientific curiosity. Because that would have, in then the uh, prosecutor's kind of mind, would have possibly been like, so you do believe in medical. Sure, like, sure. Do you know what I mean? But he was like, well, no, 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 I wasn't. I'm not a doctor. I have no idea the situation. I just wanted to see what was happening. Observe, yeah. Yeah. To make things weirder, Dr. Roth claimed that Annalise did not have any injuries that he could see at the time. However, Father Renz was already on record stating that the physical deterioration and self-inflicted wounds were apparent. Interesting. So now you got, like, this doctor lying about it, too. And so what does how that mean? far into this was this? Uh, this would have been uh, within the Towards 11 the months okay. that um. they were... Sometime in the 11 months that they were performing these exorcisms. Yeah, because it, it was, like, an 11th-month process. So are we supposed to trust this Roth guy? I don't know, because it's... You know, he was a he's a witness. And he's already seen like, oh, no, I wasn't there as a doctor. I was just watching. I'm like, oh, so I don't know if I even want to trust anything you have to say. Exactly. So I just would like, I would have omitted that, but who knows. Anyway, another fact that helped the defense was that after her autopsy, it was proven that she had a healthy brain and no signs of damage that would have typically been caused for seizures. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, they couldn't. I mean, I don't know if it was, was maybe totally for the time, but... this could totally be one of the worst cases of epilepsy ever, but if they did an autopsy and the brain looked fine, ooh, that's messed up. Yeah, relatively fine. They're like, okay, well, what the heck? Uh, this is interesting because although I do believe that Annalise shouldn't have stopped seeing a doctor or been monitored by a doctor at some point, they still would have focused the treatment on epilepsy. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, if she did decide to get treatment, they would have done all these things to her body... But it wouldn't have been necessary either because apparently she didn't have it. Yeah, assuming. So it's kind of, what do you do? Yeah, assuming she didn't have some sort of weird brain ailment they weren't able to detect on an autopsy, the epileptic treatments probably wouldn't have done anything. Exactly. So it's kind of like, so damned if she does, damned if she doesn't kind of thing. Very curious. Yeah. Uh, the prosecution. So this is their side now. Despite the aut- autopsy, the prosecution still argued heavily that Annalise did have epilepsy and psychosis. They, of course, rejected the notion that she was possessed and basically made it seem like only ignorant and crazy people would believe that. They also did everything they could to discredit testimonies. Uh, they had two experts examine Father Alt's behavior, and apparently these experts concluded that he was showing signs of schizophrenia. <laughs> it just seems like more decimation than anything, because Father Alt... Defamation? Defamation. What did I say? Decimation. <laughs> which is to get rid of one-tenth of something. Just to Whoopsies. decimate it. <laughs> well, they're decimating his credit. <laughs> they're taking away one-tenth of it. I'm going with it. Yeah, so I guess... But I don't think he had a schizophrenia. I never saw anything about that. Uh, they but were probably just trying to make him look bad. At in the, the time. Corner. Exactly. The prosecution also claimed that the medication she was provided since the beginning was helping, but that one of the symptoms that caused her to suppress seizures were also possibly causing her to have stronger illusions or delusions. Oh. Yes. So the medication might have made it seem worse. Yes. So she should have been, what would have happened is that she should have been taking other medication to combat the side effects. Just pile on the medication. So it's like, right, you have to take a medication for this, but then this to like combat the side effects we all know what that's like yeah i'm i'm hesitant to argue for or against that method because yeah. i'm sure it works sometimes and it doesn't others sometimes you have to see what's worth exactly. what, is it worth it yeah. yeah is it worth it i've taken medications in the past where it wasn't worth it and then i've taken yeah. ones where it totally was oh yeah totally no, not with hallucinations or anything mind you <laughs> for completely unrelated things what's but... up you're not telling me something chase Just kidding. <laughs> what do you think they stopped talking to me a couple weeks ago we're uh... fine <laughs> So, yeah, that's what they were arguing. Okay, so obviously, adding on to that, they said that they believe that without the proper combination of medication, that the exosomes that they were performing on her were actually causing her to fall deeper into her delusions. So it was like helping her think that this was real because everyone around her thought it was real, too. Another fact supporting this was that Annalise behaved normally when she wasn't undergoing an exorcism. Although I don't know if that was true because this is what they said. They were, like, trying to act like they, she was normal when she wasn't. Yeah. But that doesn't seem very true either because she was having other issues as well. Well, yeah, they keep talking about things like she wasn't falling down on her knees and praying during the exorcisms. It sounded like that's I mean, sometimes she, was, she was, but, you know, I think they were more aggressive and more, yeah. like, heightened all these behaviors for sure. And whether or not this was a supernatural thing happening to her or a medical thing, 
the presence of an exorcism would probably exacerbate either. I mean... It would. It would exacerbate. Like, either way. You can't use it to argue against one or the other, because I'm pretty sure having preachers performing an exorcism for four years, four years, four hours on you mm-hmm. in one night is going to suck no matter what. Like it's that's, gonna, a, that's an intense procedure. It's, so. it's very exhausting. Exactly. And also, if... If she only had her delusions when she was having exorcisms that would heighten this, that she would have eaten when she wasn't having exorcisms. But she wasn't eating. Oh, that's eating. a good point. I didn't even think about that. Right. Yeah, she'd be eating when there weren't exorcisms. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, and another point, too, is that a lot of these um, delusions or hallucinations or whatever you want to call them were happening before she even took medication. In fact, she took the medication because of these reasons. That's a point. Well, but didn't they but say it, could, it would have enhanced It could the have illusions? enhanced it. It could okay. have like made them worse. So you're right. But you don't know if that was it. So still, you can't really say which one is or the other. Still pretty early in that medical field, isn't it? Yeah. It, I mean, this is I'd insane. I'd say even today it's still as early, but right. 70s, yeah, it's got to be even rougher. All right. Definitely. So what do you think the judgment was, innocent or guilty? Um, The real story. You know what happened in the movie. Well, yeah, but I, the movie could be total bull. I would say that they probably would find him guilty only because... Europe, especially uh, at the time in the 70s and the post World War II, was going strongly scientific in mm-hmm. their viewpoints. They were straying further from religion. You're having less devout religious people. I have a feeling they probably would have convicted saying they didn't believe she was possessed. You're right. They found them guilty. Annalise's parents and both priests were sentenced to six months in prison. The priests were suspended for three years. And they all had to pay the court's cost. Uh, since this was in Germany, I looked up the average sentencing for negligent homicide because I wasn't sure. And it looks like it's usually somewhere between three to 15 years. So they really did go this lenient. This very light. Very light. Well, and I think the main reason for that is, she's st- I guess they could argue, she still wasn't eating by her own volition. Mm-hmm. And they could have forced it. But like, I guess they might have been like, okay, so there were ways to save her, but you didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, preventing someone from eating... And them refusing it are different levels of responsibility, understandably. But yeah. Okay, I see it. So six months, they got off really light. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what the the jury was saying. Or I don't know if there was a jury. I'm assuming there was, but or the the judge themselves. But the fact that this was so light, I think maybe they did believe him a little bit. I'd like to or think. they realize that the this is complex. I, I think, and this was kind of. I don't want. We're not going to talk about spoilers from the movie or anything. I think you could assume that a jury, if assuming this was a jury trial, they could, they could at least believe whether or not they believe in the exorcism or the possession. If they believe that the preachers truly devoutly mm-hmm. believed in this, that that kind of exempted them from a level of responsibility meaning they they sh- maybe should have known better but they were doing what they believed was right which especially makes since you more compassionate. Yeah, and and you know if maybe they pushed on Elise a little more cuz obviously she confided in them. Sure. You don't know if they did were they really consistently telling her she should go to a doctor or were they like every once in a while asking? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think a lot of court trials are about, about that when it comes to right and wrong is how much can you judge someone if they do something that they believe is right but everyone else thinks it's wrong? Mm-hmm. It becomes a complicated thing. So yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So that is uh, basically the story. I do have some other facts that I found that surround the case. So let me go. Please do. Yeah. So a crazy wait, fact. Wait, wait, wait. Real quick question. Maybe okay. You yes. have it. Do you know anything about whether or not these uh, religious figures, if they went back into the practice or anything afterwards? Honestly, I don't remember because they got like three years probation, so they weren't able to practice. Well, or but I mean, priests. can you imagine if you're in Germany when this is hitting the news and... People are like, I don't want this guy. He, he killed a possessed chick or something. <laughs> right. He's like, he can't even perform an exorcism. <laughs> 67 times and he didn't get it right? Holy cow, man. He's like, no thanks. I mean, so. <laughs> they go into baptisms like, all right, I'm going to dip your child 67 times. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work. Let's go. Oh, gosh. All right. So hook me up with those facts and figures. Okay. So I discovered in an article I read called Demons on the Loose by Famous Exorcisms. <laughs> a very legit article, thank you. Sounds like a book you get in like the uh, uh, the impulse aisle at the end. It's like five totally awesome exorcisms that you can try at home. <laughs> Maybe. I learned that there was a link between Annalise's possession and the possession of Anne Eklund. For those who may not know, Anne Eklund was another popular exorcism case that occurred in 1928. So this predates Annalise. 
Now, without giving too much information, because I do plan on covering the story eventually. Mm, okay, good, because I, yes. I was like, this sounds interesting. <laughs> it is believed that some of the demons that possessed Eklund were also the same that possessed Annalise. Uh, were these in the same area, or are they different parts of Europe or U.S.? Like, where was this Eklund one? Was it in Germany? Okay, so I actually think it was in the United States. Okay, so the demons yeah. are well traveled. Yes, they're worldwide, 505. <laughs> oh, it's 305? 305, what are you, 505? <laughs> Whatever. Don't you put that hate on, 505? <laughs> Don't you dare. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, see. they're like Pitbull. They're over Pitbull. The place. Worldwide, okay. Other facts I found interesting during my research is that during the time the two priests were performing her their exorcisms on Annalise, other priests from all over Europe were very interested and who had learned about what was going on at the time. As you know, things were not going so well, and so priests would also ask if they could assist. On the other end, there were other priests that were arguing Father Alt and Father Renz to stop the exorcism and take him to the hos- or take her to the hospital. Sure, sure. So you also have this kind of like, please stop doing this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are priests that have since analyzed this and agreed that Emily should have been in the hospital and on medication. They also tend to think that the whole exorcism ritual is antiquated uh, concept and that the whole being possessed thing should be taken more metaphorically. However, on the other side of the coin, the more old school thinkers, I guess, priests criticize this rejection. In fact, they believe it's hypocritical because they are saying that if you believe in God and all his holiness, then there has to be the opposite, the evil. About a year and a half after her death, a nun had visions that Annalise's body was still intact and requested that the body be exhumed. Her parents believed the nun Mm -mm. and gave permission. Not good. Yeah. When they opened the casket, examiners noted that that in fact the body had decayed at a normal rate and the nun was never identified, so I couldn't... (laughs) She's like, I gotta go. Oh, gotta go. (laughs) I'm just seeing this like fat little nun running in the distance. (laughs) I just always want to see a dead body. She's like, I got to take off my Halloween costume now. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So one real quick thing to note, though. So I actually read this in a newspaper article that was scanned and put online or whatever. But this wasn't included. But apparently people say that the parents or anyone else were allowed to see Annalise's body. So this made people really suspicious. Like, oh, maybe she was intact, but they don't want to say... Oh, okay. I just kind of brought on, like, the skeptics or, like, the conspiracy, conspiracy theorists. theorists. Exactly. They're always out there. They're always going to be there. On an upside, perhaps, I don't know if this is really considered, but Annalise's body, when it was exhumed, initially was in an old wooden casket. So, since then, when they exhumed her, they put her in a nice casket. Oh, yeah. Upgrade. So, I mean, like, right. So, I guess, like, you know, if they're like, well, we, we're doing this anyway, let's put her in something nice. Uh, today, people all over the world believe that Annalise atoned for sins of others and have officially given her an, uh, or no, have unofficially given her the title of a saint. Yeah, yeah. This is a quote I got from one of the articles, just to finish everything. Quote, buses often still come to see Annalise's grave. The grave is a gathering point for religious outsiders. They write notes with requests and thanks for her help and leave them on the grave. They pray, they sing, and and travel on, end quote. Wow. So that part messes me up because just the way my brain works is let's just pretend for a second that all the possession stuff is the correct route. I don't know what you guys believe. I'm just saying let's just hypothetically say that was the route that actually happened here. Mm-hmm. I would have a hard time going to the grave of someone who was possessed. Well, for some reason I mean, that messes me up. Well, if you're going to believe the whole story, then you got to believe that uh, the Virgin Mary helped her and they're no longer there. In fact, I know, but my brain just doesn't uh, work that way. I'm just like, <laughs> that body was possessed. I'm really freaked out by it. Oh, right. Which maybe makes me a bad person, but it just, it just messes well, me up. Well, it's a very scary story. I mean, if you want to just, I mean, you know, even though you know what happens in the end, for myself, even hearing the, the, the recordings mm-hmm. was very disturbing, I would say. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, the demons are gone, but you know, I'm hearing this and I'm like, ugh, don't come at me. Yeah. I don't know if I could see that grave. That's really messed up. That poor girl, though. It sounds like no matter what happened to her, be it she had some crazy medical condition or she was possessed, it sounds like she had a really, really crappy last couple years. Yeah, this is going to be one of my heavier episodes for sure. Yeah. Note my sunny disposition. (laughs) Um, 
Yeah, this one was messed up. And so, okay, so we, the movie was on, is on this month's movie list, and yeah. we just watched it last night. Yes. It was the, for October 2nd. They are different. So I would recommend mm-hmm. that if you're interested in this story, you should watch the movie because they do change a lot, but they kind of cover some of the it's ideas. It's different and the same in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's, it, it, they, I think they did a really good job. Um, and, and we won't spoil anything with the changes, but. Right. Uh, I would say the real story is more disturbing and the movie pushes the fear because the one thing about the movie is it doesn't have the same time scale. So they have to they can push the fear pretty heavily, whereas in the real story, her being possessed and still going on walks with her family over four years kind of changes how you perceive the potential possession or medical issue that she she may or may not have been going through. Heavy story. though. Yeah. So that's the end of my story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This isn't the end of the episode. We're going to be talking about our movie list and other fun things. So if you guys want to stick around, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, either we'll see you next time or stick around. Absolutely. So what do you got, Chase? All right. So it's time to talk in depth about this fabulous movie list. Once again, if you missed it at the beginning, we've posted on Instagram and I will totally put it on Facebook and Twitter as well. But we've got the movie list and it's one movie for every single day of the month. This has been a bit of an obsession over the years. We watch as many as we can, and we usually see all of them. Actually, to be fair, <laughs> Lily pretty much always sees every movie every year. It's yeah. me who misses out on a couple. Uh, sometimes I have to take a little break every now and then, because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes if I'm watching a horror movie every single night, or sometimes multiple horror movies in mm-hmm. a night, after a couple days... I need, like, a break of something chipper and fun. Uh, and so sometimes, like, when we get to one, I'm like, hey, you know, you have fun, Lily. I'm going to go, like, play Mario or something. Yeah, something really, like, innocent. I bleach <laughs> Um Because it weighs heavy on me, whereas Lily, she just, it fuels her fire. And I actually think uh, it makes her happier. So it kind of works out for her. So she sees every movie every month. I try to see almost every now, single Now, this one month, I will say that I did actually try putting palette cleansers like once every week so hopefully absolutely i mean they are still, still kind of horror themed but they're more fun like Shaun of the dead i put hocus pocus this time yes yeah, so things like that mix some comedies yeah. in there and i think i i would like those in there as well because they help well i was gonna say they make me feel like halloween is coming you know it's and it's fun to me halloween is more of a joyful it, it's poking <laughs> fun at the stupid fear stuff right and to me my favorite horror is probably comedy But uh, we should mention that there are movies on this list that are new to us as well. So don't be all hateful and judgmental. Oh, yeah. There's movies I've never seen. Because we may have not seen it. We don't like it. And if it's one we did like and put on there, you didn't like it. Well, then we just have different tastes. Suck it. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You can just watch your own fun movies. The only movie that definitely stays the same every month, though, is we always kickstart the month. The last day of September, we always watch The Thing to get ready for it. And that's the 1982 John Carpenter, The Thing, which we absolutely love. We recommend it to everyone. And to be fair, if we're talking 1982, it aged better than almost every other horror movie from that era. I mean, it from a lot of them, yeah. The visual effects are still good. Acting still works. The concept still works. It didn't get cheesy. It does still feel like an '80s movie. For for, you can't really change that. I mean, it's from the '80s. If you're gonna watch a 1982 movie, you, you can't go wrong with this one. Yeah. We have a few staples that do show up every single year, but we kind of change what days they are. Those tend to be the original Halloween movie, which is a favorite of yours, as well as Idle Hands, which is a perfect palate cleanser comedy like we talked about. Exactly. But we try to get a good mix of all the genres in there. We've got slashers. We've got monster flicks. We've got comedy. We've got everything. And because I beg her every month, (laughs) we always have to have one sci-fi horror. And in previous years, we've watched Event Horizon or Pandorum. We've kind of done those to death. So this year, we're doing kind of a goofy monster one. We're doing Pitch Black, yeah, that's which is your, one of my favorites. One of your favorites, yeah. It's cheesy. I actually think it'll kind of work as a palate cleanser because it's so hard to take seriously. But another thing that we should mention is mm-hmm. that according to the list, if you look at it, you see all the movies for the 31 days. But sometimes, me and Lily, we get into this mood where when we finish a movie, we just we have this urge to watch another movie. Oh, yeah. And so we don't like... Get a movie from later in the week. We pick something that isn't on the list and we watch it. And sometimes we double down. Sometimes it's because the movie we watched on the list we didn't like. And we're like, oh, we need a good one. Or it was so good, we just need another. <laughs> or we know it has a sequel and we're like, ah, screw it. Let's do it. So yeah. we will definitely be talking about additional movies that we watch during the month. And it's usually some of the funnier, goofier movies. Like we'll put in Resident Evil, which isn't a great movie. And we don't want to waste a day of our month on it. Yeah. But it's totally one we watch. Oh, and then something I forgot to mention. I should have said this a lot earlier. I meant to put Ghostwatch on the list, 
but I didn't. I, I, I chose not to because, one, it's not very easy to ex- to download, I should say. To access, yeah. It's, it's uh, not yeah. really easy to get to in the U.S. In fact, we'd say the only way to do it is either buying a non-region DVD or... That's not going to work on your Blu-ray. Or a download that may or may not be illegitimate, which we will never be able to officially condone I will never say to do this. And also, second, I think it's it might still be on Shutter. So if you want to get maybe like the, the subscription for just a month to be able to see or it. Or seven day free trial or, they have. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to access everything. That's I don't know. How, I don't That's know true. how it works. So, but anyway, yeah, they have it on there and yeah, if you think it's worth it, do yeah, it. But we, otherwise, we didn't, we didn't think it was fair to put it on the list because yeah. it's so hard to get a hold of. So that's one that's not on there. Another one we definitely know we are going to watch mm-hmm. is the original Japanese Godzilla, which was called Gojira. Yeah. Because we have uh, two of our friends uh, have been wanting to watch that with us for like a year now. So we're definitely <laughs> going to do gonna that. Do so we're going to do that. We're definitely going to watch Ghost Watch. We're going to do things to see it. And <laughs> we will not mention. <laughs> we'll never say. I'll never tell. So we will have more movies and we will talk about them. So far, we're only... Uh, three movies in when we're doing this recording. We haven't watched any additional, but we're going to start now because we were putting all our focus into the move, the housing stuff, and this episode. So now we're going to start getting the extras. And we'll talk about them every single every single episode, which ones we watched the previous week. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. So I also think it'd be important every episode for us to talk about what movies we're going to watch between this episode and the next episode. That means we'll talk about the movies that are up until next episode. So mm-hmm. we've already watched for the first. It was Happy Death Day, one of my favorites, a comedy. It's so fun. A comedy slash good way to start it's like groundhog's day slasher comedy recommend it to everyone super funny and there is a sequel not as good but totally worth watching and i I told the after we finished i'm like we have to watch the sequel this month because i'm like jones and for it uh and then last night was the exorcism of emily rose which the story we just did prepping us for this exactly now tonight uh when this recording is out is black as night that's a new one to us. We haven't seen it. We don't know Okay, it. yeah, so I put that one on because I saw it was new. I've never seen it. It just came out on October 1st. I think it's a Prime exclusive. It's a Prime exclusive, so and gotta get the Amazon Prime. Sorry I'm not gonna say much about it because I don't want to, like, not taint, but, like, sway anyone's opinion on whether or not this is, like, worth watching. I thought the trailer was fun, and... Well, I'm super excited, because I haven't yeah. even seen the trailer. I know nothing. I, I love going into movies with no information, not oh, even Oh, okay, actors. well, then that's better. That's my favorite. <laughs> I love huge... I'm a surprise fanatic. Good. Lily's not. She's the opposite. She wants... She actually wants to know the entire plot of a movie before she I goes like, She's like, just give it to me. Tell me everything, and then I'll decide. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm excited about that. Now, for Monday... This is the only movie on the entire month I think does deserve a warning. It's Contracted. Contracted is a personal favorite of mine, but it is a very gross film. Now, it's not like blood and guts everywhere gross. It's not like a It's a little disturbing. Kind of like audition a little bit. Yeah, um, a little it, intimate. It is so. a uh, the the genre I think is described as body horror, where you kind so. of see horrible things happen to a body, but this isn't because of a slasher or a murder. It's I can't tell you without telling you what the plot is but you need a strong stomach for it so i'd recommend not eating popcorn during this movie <laughs> but it's totally worth watching because it is it is one of the most unique in its genre which once again i can't tell you without ruining anything that one i highly recommend though but be warned and then tuesday we've got house of the devil yes. the modern movie but it was made like a 70s horror film it is phenomenal might be a bit slow for some people. For uh, me, it was just it's amazing. one of the best horror movies just, ever made. I love that movie. Yeah, and that one is totally about the satanic panic mm-hmm. of the late we, 70s, early area, 80s with the cults area, and everything. Yeah. So good. Totally worth watching. Then Wednesday, we have another new one we haven't seen. It's uh, VHS 94. So we, I, this is the first year in a long time since I think I've seen VHS for the first time. Is not on the list this time. The original is not the on originals, the list. The originals, the first and the second, are the only ones. I pretend the third one doesn't really exist. Yeah. And now they have a fourth one, which they said VHS 94. So I'm excited it about that. It is a Shutter exclusive. So that means for the first time we are going to subscribe because we have to yeah. see it. So this one I did put on. Okay, so I know it might be confusing. Like, why didn't I put Ghost Watch? But I don't know. This was kind of later in the month and a lot of... Or not later, but this is something that I just decided that maybe would was worth putting on. But it is accessible through Shutter, which everyone can yeah. get, and it is a brand new movie, so it's it could be amazing and exciting. Exactly. And if you haven't seen any of the VHSs, they're compilation movies with lots of little stories that are tied together with an, a big story, and they use a unique visual style. A lot of it's found footage style, so 
you know, if you hate that, you might want to avoid it. But if not, phenomenal. Some of the best. VHS so, 1 and 2 are incredible. So VHS 1 and 2, absolutely incredible. Viral, I don't recommend, but some people do like it. So this is number four, but I don't think yeah. you have to see the other ones to have seen this. They Every single VHS has stood on its own before. Oh, yeah, you definitely don't need to see any of them. You can watch the second one alone, the third one. Yeah, and... they're just thematically similar, but right. there's no plot carryover. In fact, within the stories, their plots don't carry over. Right. So, and then Thursday the 7th, we have What We Do in the Shadows, <gasps> yes. which we saw for the first time last year. I which know. was just one of the funniest movies you ever seen. Now, not to be confused, uh, I think you can watch it on Hulu. There is a show that's a spin-off of it. We haven't seen that yet, and we're hoping to see some of this. That came we, out like in 2015, right? I think, I think you're right. Or something like that. The but, the show, not yeah. the movie. Yeah. But we are definitely watching the movie for this day. It's it's the funniest vampire <laughs> movie you're ever going to see. It even has werewolves in it. Directed um, by, and I think written as well, or uh, co-writer, I'm not sure. Tika Waititi, the yeah. guy who did... Thor, uh, Rag- Ragnarok. Ragnarok, and actually he's done a million movies. That's I like, mean, he's a, I, I'm just trying to like put in perspective, like if you like his, his style of comedy that kind of carries yeah, in. Yeah, he's a so, genius. Yeah. And then the last one before next episode on Friday is one of the scarier ones, and we actually covered the story is Veronica. Yes, and that's why I put it on there because, I mean, one, I love the movie, so I knew I was going to do it anyway, but this was more important because I've already done the story. So if you guys watch it, have fun because it's it's pretty creepy. It's definitely it's a perfect Friday night movie. It's exactly. a popcorn movie. It's scary and it's another possession movie. Mm-hmm. It is in Spanish. Uh, so oh, I think yes. this is the first one of our list that is subtitled. The, um, the yeah the the origin story is from Spain and it was made in Spain as well. Yeah. So uh, and you know. if we've learned anything, some of the best horror movies we've ever seen are from Spain. You've got Wreck. Mm-hmm. You've got The Orphanage, which is later this month, <laughs> and we've got this Veronica. They're all very good. Yeah. So I hope. Veronica isn't dubbed over like unfortunately last year when I put Ugh. on yeah when I put Wreck I didn't know that they were going to do the stupid dub voice it's the only one we can get a hold of it is was the... like yeah one of the worst dubbings I've ever heard in my life it's it was awful it ruined the movie it yeah. made it not scary sorry about that but hopefully this isn't and you guys can just you know read subtitles I trust me it's worth it it's worth it so next week we will talk about the, we will talk if we think there's anything important to say about those movies and then we'll cover the movies we're going to do for the next week so if you want to join us for our horror month you absolutely should yay so far since we've only seen two there's not much to talk about except that Happy Death Day was one of the most surprising movies I thought it had a weird name and the trailers looked bad but then when I saw it I was just like this is genius Mm -hmm. in the making very creative writing they knew what they were doing and you can tell when you see the sequel the writer had big ideas and he Uh carried them through it it wasn't out of nowhere he planted the seeds for the sequel in the first one yeah it wasn't just a oh it made money I need a second one Mm -hmm. it's there yeah I thought they did a really good job and I thought it was a pretty good representation of seeing bad characters have to like change and confront how evil they oh, really the are. Oh, the growth of a of the protagonist. It yeah. was done believably, which I thought was really good. It yeah. was really strong. Good acting. For sure. Well, so anyway. I think that's it. Yeah. And then we'll update you next week for next week's movies list as well. Absolutely. So that does, I guess that brings everything to a close this week. As a reminder, if you have any scary, personal scary stories, please contact us at hotwpodcast at gmail.com because we're going to be covering a lot of them Mm -hmm. at the end of this month on our final October episode. So we want to hear your story. So please send those to us and get in contact with us. Yeah. As always, we post episodes every Saturday and you can find us on all standard podcast platforms. Thank you for joining us. And we're probably going to have to get a drink after this episode. (laughs) And maybe you do too. But if you've already been drinking, keep going and enjoy it or do it when you can responsibly. And if you aren't drinking because you partied too hard last night, don't worry because the best cure for a hangover is fear. Fear.